the very first thing that we need to do is set up our data table. When we're setting up our data table, it doesn't matter if you're putting the trials across the top or if you're putting the trials along the side. Um, for a science fair, you probably put them along the side so that they would fit onto a piece of paper when you printed it a little bit easier and so it wasn't super long. But it doesn't matter for our experiment where we're doing three trials. So I've decided to put across the top. The experiment that I'm looking at is uh, my parents have some chickens and they want to know how many large eggs are uh, given based on the time of year. So the independent variable is the time of year. The dependent variable is how many large eggs the chickens give. So um, I've looked at spring, winter, and summer. And uh, I did three springs, three winters, and three summers. So those are my trials. So now we just got to get some data. So the data looks like this. Um, at this point, we have now got enough stuff on here that we can go in and start calculating our averages. So averages um, are going to go after the trial. So it should look trial one, trial two, trial three, and then average. If you've decided to put your trials along the left side, obviously the averages will go underneath trial one, two, and three. So if I'm putting my averages on the left side, um, I need to click into the box, or excuse me, if I'm putting the averages on the right side, to click into the box where I want my average to show up. You have two ways to do this. You can either go up to the formula bar and start putting in, the, or uh, find the function up there. I like to just type it in. So I type in equals and I start typing the word average, and average is one of the options that pops up. Now the computer wants to know the average of what. So I need to scroll through the three boxes that I want the computer to average, and then I just hit enter. And it's given me my average. Now you don't have to do that again and again, that's the whole same process for these other two boxes. You can just copy that box, so I did control C, and then I'm highlighting the two boxes where I want it to go, and I paste it, control V. Now I've got all these obnoxious decimal points, and that's just really annoying. So I don't want all those decimal points, and in order to get rid of them, you can't just type in there and delete it because, see right here, you've got a formula in there. You don't have a number that you can just take off all the decimal places. So what you have to do is you highlight three boxes that you want to look nicer, and there's this button right here that says decrease decimal places. If I click that until I have the number of decimal places that I want, one decimal place seems appropriate, now we're in business. Next thing that we need to do is we need to add some units. So all these numbers in my table have no meaning until there are units attached to them. Well, if you decide to type in the units into every box, not only is that really super annoying to have to do all those boxes, but it will be um, hard for us to make our, ta our graph in just a minute. So underneath, we're going to write all units in, and then each of these things is number of large eggs. So I've got that underneath. The very last thing that I need to do is put a title. I've noticed that a number of you are putting a title into this uh, empty box right here. Um, it's not a very good practice because it's not a big space to put your title and it's kind of hard to notice sometimes if you're not looking closely. So the title should go across the top. I like to take all the boxes across the top and merge them. That's this merge cells box. So that, and then I center it too, so that it looks nice and neat. So inside that box, all you need to do is type a title that describes what's being compared. So if you want to go real simple, you basically just look at your IV and your DV. So time of year versus number of large eggs. And we have a complete table.